dear dad. I think I underestimated how tough these gym trainers were gonna be. I guess it goes to show you can't just rely on type advantage if your opponent's crafty, and they were. Probably doesn't help that I brought in a team to purposefully make this whole thing harder, but it's time to move past that now. We made it through the gym trainers, and I got my head back on straight. Plus, Bonnaroo and Roxanne evolved! Sad. I'm so proud of them for hanging in there, and I feel really good about this match now that we've had a chance to get the nerves out. Tufus, you ready, buddy? All right, Dad, we're going in. I'll ride again once I've got my gym badge. In the green room, Pearl, Mortimer has gotten up on his crutches and gotten out of the room as it seems as though it is time for the next challenge. I'm sure you can assume that it is Luca out there now. So as he exits the room, what do you want to do? Big breath. <gasps> Collapse to the knees. Go get him, Salvatore. <laughs> I've never sweated so much in my life either. How do the street performers do it? <laughs> Coconut is immediately like surfing on his tail over to the bag of chips that Mortimer left open on the couch. Nice. <laughs> All right, we're going to look for any incriminating evidence that just confirms what we believe. Okay, go ahead and roll to survey environment. Nine. All right, you can ask one for the survey environment list. I'm assuming you're asking, is there like information here I can use? Yes, is absolutely. Is there a resource here I can yeah. use? Looking around, you do not see anything incriminating against Mortimer here in this green room. You find that there are, you know, drinks in the mini fridge, snacks in a little cabinet. You know, he's this is very much his chill space, but there is nothing that seems sinister to you. What you do find is a little notebook that he has tucked away, I think, in a little drawer of a you know small desk that he has over in the room. And in it, it just has some notes that are very like, first of all, his handwriting is just chicken scratch, torchic scratch. But it's just a lot of like questions like warehouse, who, who were those people? And like, there's like a list of Pokemon, like Octillery, Tentacruel, Shiftry, Sharpedo. And they've got like questions next to them. It, and then like, where did they go? Uh, it just seems like just things that he wanted to make sure that he remembered for himself, but it doesn't, it doesn't seem to have any kind of real rhyme or reason to it. Is he a good guy? That, that, I don't, huh? That seems, I don't know. I don't know what to think. That's what you find. That is what is of note. I don't know if he's a good guy or not, guys. I'm very confused now. Did I just will this rat into being? Did my fury for aquamarine just carry over? <laughs> Who knows? All right, I put it back. I grab the chips and we head out to the stands. I take off my tiny little hat and I'm like, oh, for not. <laughs> So you, you I do that. I keep it out. I don't leave it there. <laughs> okay. I was, I was about to ask, do you, do you take it with you or no? I take um, it with me, yeah. Great. Uh, so you leave that room. Are you going back all the way, I assume, around through the other hallways and stuff so you go into the actual entrance? Sure. <laughs> I'll be good. I'll be good. Instead of going out through the gym leader's entrance I was following going Mortimer? To do it. I mean, you, you can. It's very Pearl. Um, but no, 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 no. I'll be good. Okay. <laughs> So you exit that room and start making your way around as you hear the voice of Karen loudly over the speakers in the other stadium area. Ladies and gentlemen of Boland! I forgot about this, but I do love this part. <laughs> uh, and she starts going through her whole spiel, and you hear it echoing throughout as you make your way back into the stadium and find yourself a little seat next to Toadstool. I think that Luca has got some of his party in the stands there chilling as well, like... Maximilian and Mikey and Zilla's definitely there. They're watching and everything. You've got a whole cheering section. Love to see it. Fanta's out. Coconut's out. Celie's out. We're all very excited. <laughs> Fanta's out and he's sitting right next to Maximilian and they both kind of got their arms crossed and they're just like looking at each other every now and then like a little like nudge, straighten, straighten myself out kind of thing. Uh, but Luca makes his way up the final ladder, climbing his way up to this ground floor. You got this, Salvatore! 
The ladder lets out in this short tunnel, this time with no curves or offshoots, just a straight walk into that bright space ahead. And as he emerges, his eyes and ears take a moment to adjust to the lighting and sounds. He's in the stadium. The terrain is rocky and muddy, as it was before, with large boulders and stone formations jutting out of the ground in various places at different angles. The nose pass walks to his right, pauses for a second before it gets springboarded up into the air oh, on the I Karen's was, platform. I thought you were about to say before it just... Um, dissolves like a blip, <laughs> like like it gets blipped out <laughs> before it gets snapped away. Oh my gosh! No, the it gets it gets it trampoline get springboarded up onto the platform with Karen as I it normally like does, do and then I it dabs. I would like to do that. Oh man, that's totally me. <laughs> as as it lands on the platform next to Karen, the nose pass dabs. I will do that. I would like to do that. I would like to go next. <laughs> Pearl says. Um. But as Karen is in her big teased hair, leather, ripped denim, whole grungy outfit, she says, Ladies and gentlemen, this is a unique challenger. You might know the name, but not the face. But this is Lucas Salvatore. How would they know the name? Oh, probably. Oh, God. Okay. okay. <laughs> He probably was on a magazine. You should look at the year he's born, guys, and get all the ma- magazines and newspapers. But he's got a tough challenge ahead of him today because it's time for the one, the only hot rocket gym leader. <laughs> and from his tunnel on the opposite side of the stadium, this large figure emerges, but this time not walking casually and confidently. Instead, on a track leading out to his stage, Mortimer emerges shredding on the guitar, but in a massive rock and roll throne with his leg propped up. I knew you were going to Dave Grohl this. I knew it the minute you said he broke his leg. Absolutely. I knew it. <laughs> He is in his, if you haven't seen Dave Grohl's broken leg to a rock and roll throne, it's basically that. Just more with with rocks and stones and geodes and things. But it's also got guitars and, and all sorts of other uh, rock and roll accoutrement. But now, he is in his be, rock throne. Now, be honest. Yes. When I pointed it out after we were done recording... Was it the first time you had thought about it? Oh, no. Ever was, since I decided that he broke his leg, he was okay. going to be in the rock throne. Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> you, you did call me on it, for right, sure. Cool, 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 cool. I can, I can live with that. Wearing his baggy flannel shirt and Stone Temple Prime Apes t-shirt and wielding that signature red guitar as the chair rolls up, Mortimer says, All right, all right Lucas Salvatore. Salvatore. I'm excited. All right. Well, well all right. Well, all right. Well... All right. <laughs> you good, man? I'm great. I'm, I am. I am he. I am the Luca, not possessed by Pearl. I don't know, man. <laughs> There's an interesting energy. Well, let's. All right, let's battle. There it is. Yeah. Roll initiative. Oh my word! Why? Why now? Double sixes. Whoa, okay. Quick, quick on the draw. Yeah, he didn't have the best out-of-the-gate line, but he was just ready. <laughs> well, his his strange cadence threw Mortimer off of like, is, is he okay? Oh, oh, sure. Yeah, all right, we're going. <laughs> <laughs> so with that natural 12, Luca goes first yeah. as he sends out El the Sneasel and Mortimer sends out a rye horn. You guys, I just got so nervous. Ha, 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 ha. All right, so Luca's turn is up first. This big old Rocky Rhino, uh, which he's very familiar with because he has one, yeah. is out on the field. What's he going to do? We're going to shape the field. Okay, shaping the field with L. Go ahead and roll. Ten. Ten, a full success. Great. Which shape the field tag is she putting out there? We're going to use A7, accurate. So we're going to take away this Pokemon's defense. Excellent. And since it's a full success, Rhyhorn will not get to add an extra tag onto the field. I think L, um, like, sharpens her claws. That's it. Nice. Shing, shing. Shing. Yeah, it's cool. She puts herself in an advantageous position up on one of the rocks. As she uses A7 accurate, she will be ignoring their, I assume, special defense is what you're looking for again, since she's rocking the icy wind. Yeah. All right, all right. That is going to be Luca's main action. Would you like for L to take any extra action? No, I think we're good. All right. It is then going to be the Rhyhorn's turn. As Mortimer says, all right, let's get things rocking and rolling. Sandstorm. Of course. 
And the Rhyhorn whips up a sandstorm. Luca's like, yeah, that, that lines up. Yeah, no, that, that feels pretty it. on brand for this whole thing up to this point. Yeah, sure. Ow! Ow, my eye! I imagine a drone has to, like, capture what's happening for the crowd. Absolutely. And Pearl gets real, ah, I can't see anything! Can't see anything! Oh, thank goodness. Yes, you are, you have at That's this point... That's my best friend! ...scooted along and made your way to your seat, yes. All right, so then we are back over to L. All right, Icy Wind. Icy Wind, go ahead and roll to hit. It's only a nine. A nine, Ooh. okay. With a nine, that is going to be 2d6 plus four from Stab and Favored Type for L. What she got? Ten. All right, ten is going to be doubled to 20 points of super effective ice damage against the Rhyhorn. Since she's ignoring special defense, she's also ignoring the little boost of special defense it gets from the sandstorm. Oh, good. So that is her main action there. Anything else? Or that his turn? That's his turn. Great. I imagine at this point she's trying to keep her distance some and just yes. shoot these icy blasts from a little ways away. Nice. She's using her leverage on the rock. She took the high ground. For sure. Well, if Obi-Wan taught us anything, it's the importance of the high uh, ground. Yeah. All right, at the end of her turn, she's going to take seven points of damage from the Sandstorm. We're not afraid, team. And that will then take us back to the Rhyhorn. As Mortimer says, all right, well, let's uh, let's start making things a little interesting. Run up and go for a bulldoze, Rhyhorn. She's super fast. It is just going to be a mixed success. Just she's barely. So fast. With a seven. She's going swoosh, swoosh, swing, swing. Ha ha, swoosh, swoosh. That's the sound she makes. So that is going to be 13 minus L's defense of five. So eight points of ground damage to L. That is the Rhyhorn's turn as it has now closed the distance. It's right up on her. What's she going to do? I see wind. Nice. Roll to hit. That's a nine again. All right. A nine. Another 2d6 plus four. Okay. Seven. Seven double to 14 points of super effective ice damage as she continues to try to jump up and get out of the way, try to keep her advantageous position. That is her turn, which is then going to take us back over to the Rhyhorn after she takes seven more points of damage from the Sandstorm. Chunky. I meant to say hefty. That's a hefty amount. (laughs) Campbell's Chunky. (laughs) Mortimer then says, all right, well, let's really get into the business. Rhyhorn, Smackdown. And that is a natural 11. Ooh. The crowd sees it happening. Oh, yes. Get out of there! The Rhyhorn uses this terrain to its advantage and comes up sneaking up behind her and boom! Comes with these big, sharp rocks for this smackdown. So that is going to be 17 minus L's defense. So that is going to be 12 double to 24 super effective points of rock damage. Oh, no! Yikes! Ouchie! Ouchie no likey, She's says not Pearl. feeling so good. No, no. Luca's like, oh. Luca says, oh, geez. Okay. All right. Oh, no. But it is then Luca's turn. What's he going to do? We're swapping out. Swapping out to? Roxanne. All right. So as his main action, he recalls Elle. She goes to stand next to him, and he says, all right, Roxanne, get in there. And he sends out the Curlia. And Pearl goes, oh, wow, she looks different. And, like, Fanta and Max immediately stand, stand out of their seats and start clapping. They do. They're just They're like. They're, like, standing up already. Lucario, ah, ah, yeah. Okay, guys, guys, is, uh, she can't even hear you. She's in the zone. Ah. Let her focus. Come they uh, are both. Ridiculous right now. <laughs> and they're trying to outdo each other Absolutely, with their clapping. Absolutely, that's the whole thing. Uh, 100%. Uh, great. Okay, so he sends out Roxanne. Excellent, excellent. That is his main action. Any extra action? Oh, uh, let's choose double team. All right. Double team is her extra action. <laughs> there are now two Roxannes in Fonta and Lucario. They're like, this is our dream. Maximilian's like, what? <laughs> they're like, we can be brothers. That's amazing. But that is his turn as he sends her out. And she does take seven points of damage from the sandstorm as well. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sandstorms are really annoying me right now. Also, as L is off the field, A7 is no longer active for y'all. Yeah, I know. That was why I didn't want to. I, I was debating letting her fade, but I didn't. <laughs> All if right. If it was Pearl, she probably would have. Not going to lie. <laughs> It is then going to be the Rhyhorn's turn as Mortimer says, all right, well, new friend out here, let's go for a bulldoze. 
and that is a mixed success. A nine to hit. Roll your D6 to see if she avoids it with her double team. Four! Nice. All right. So the right horn hits her duplicate instead of her. Whoop, whoop. As she just flips her new little haircut and says, Cool. <laughs> like, yeah, right. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. You wish. <laughs> it is then her turn. All right. She will do a spin with her skirt and go to Magical Leaf. Excellent, excellent. A magical leaf. It's going to be 2d6 plus her personality. Whoa, she's got personality for days. Yeah, she does. Oh, my word. Why do you think that Blazer Ken and Lucario are clapping so much? It's a 10. A 10. Excellent. A full success. That is going to be 2d6 plus her special attack, which since her evolution is now 7. 11. 11. Now we will be taking into account the, the Rhyhorn special defense and uh, the uh, equivalent boost. Dang. Uh, so that is going to be 7 double to 14 points. Okay. That's progress. That is Luca's main action. Would you like for Curly to take an extra action? Yeah, double team. Great. Okay. So since the first one was knocked out, putting another double team back oh, up. Oh, so that's how it works, says Pearl in the stand. <laughs> Yes, once her duplicate gets hit, it fades away. But since she now has Relentless, she swapped out Hidden Ability for Relentless, she can do a main action and bonus action move on her turn so she can keep putting up that double team. Cool, that's great. Wow, that's very powerful. Um, Button is like awe dropped, like jaw dropped. <laughs> like, whoa. Button's like, what? Yeah. I want to be where the Curlia are. I want to see, want to see the magic leaf spinning. Ah. Making a double team and another best friend. Up where the mushrooms can grow and thrive. And I'm Curlia so divine. Wandering free. Wish I could be part of your evil. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Button's singing right now. Cool. At the end of the turn, Roxanne takes seven points of damage from the sandstorm. As Button is singing that, Mortimer's like, all right, come on, ride on. Keep it together. Let's let's just focus in. What would I give? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Go for another smackdown. And that will be a full success with an 11. Oh, no. I should have started singing. If it hits, go ahead and roll that oh. D6. Nope. It's one. It's a one. What would I give <laughs> if it could be my fake self right now? All right. What would I pay to spend a day away from this Rihon? Betcha in contests, they understand. They won't let you get the smacky hand. <laughs> That's all. That's all. I okay, won't, great. I won't, I won't finish. I, I was won't like, finish. I'll wait to roll the damage until you're done. <laughs> right, young Curly Eyes. Okay, I'm rolling the damage. Sick of spinning, ready to stand and ready to know what my damage is. Get hit a <laughs> What's lot. What's your damage, then, Curly Eyes? Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, I'll tell you what the damage is. Oh, no. It's going to be. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> 19 minus your defense, so 17 points of oh. rock damage. 17 points of rock damage from the smack down. Luca, are you sure you know what you're doing? <laughs> I think I am. We're going to find out. Dear goodness. 17 points of damage from the Rhyhorn as it uses smack down. Roxanne was mid pirouette and she's like, oh. <laughs> yeah, she was like, people know. All right, but then it is going to take us to your turn. Magic leaf. Magic leaf. Yes, Nat 11. Nat 11. Excellent, excellent. That's going to be a full success for sure. Roll that damage. 2d6 plus 7. 12. All right, 12. So from the sandstorm, that is going to be 8 doubled to 16 points of super effective damage as the Rhyhorn does appear to be getting a little wobbly. All right, great. We can last. We can last. She can take him down. All right. With that, she takes seven more points of damage from the sandstorm. And then on Mortimer's turn, he says, all right, all right, now get in there and let's get a big hit. Use another bulldoze. That'll just barely come out to a 10, a full success. Go ahead and roll your D6 for your double team. Five. Nice. Five. Five. Ex 
excellent, I, yeah. excellent, excellent. All right, so that bulldoze attack does hit the duplicate instead Great. of Roxanne. Thank goodness. And with that, on the end of the Rhyhorn's turn, the sandstorm subsides. Goodbye, we do not miss you. That is going to then take us back to Roxanne. Magical leaf. Magical leaf, the roll to hit. Oh, um. Yes. All right. I just already want to use my extra action to put double team back up. Great, she I immediately <laughs> okay, great. puts up the duplicate of herself uh, to to wild applause from the blaze again in Lucario. Yes, absolutely. Okay, that's a flat seven plus personality ten. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We get it. Ten. Excellent. Yes, a full success. Roll that two d six plus seven. Six plus seven. Thirteen. 13. All right. So that's going to be eleven double to twenty two points of damage. Please be done, dude. Please. Watch that hungry hippo fall, please. Which is going to take the Rhyhorn down to negative two, Yay! knocking it out. Hey, great job. Lupus. like, yes. He's like, nice, nice, Roxanne. Way to get after it. Great, we're going to keep her in. She just does a little flip of the hair. Cool. With a coy look out to the audience. And this one, like, the whole crowd got, like, oh, yeah. on that. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Mortimer says, all right, well, I guess we're done warming up, huh? Crocorock, take it for a spin. And he sends out a crocorock. This just big crocodile that looks like a burglar. So that is going to be the end of Curly's turn then as Roxanne used that double team and magical leaf. Since the sandstorm faded away, crocorock's going to put one right back up. Seems as though his Pokemon are moving steadily through it. And also, they are definitely making the most of the terrain. I think that Luca can gather at this point that a bunch of their uh, attacks are hitting pretty hard. As if they've got some help from the terrain itself. But the Crocker Rock whips up that sandstorm on his turn, and that will then take us back to Luca. That was it? Yes, since it is the main action to use. Then we'll shape the field. All right, cool. You're shaping the field. Go ahead and roll. What are you doing it with? Bada bing, bada boom. Um, That was a really good roll. Personality is the most for her. I'm going to try to try persuasive. When an opponent attempts to attack your Pokemon, they must tough it out plus personality. On a failure, they must pick another target. But if no one's available, then they can't attack. Oh, but they can perform a different main action. So I'd be fascinated to know what other main action they would possibly do. Okay, cool. So you're going to use P1 Persuasive. Yeah. All right, cool beans. She just starts dancing around real sassy. To the crocodile like. rock. <laughs> da, Absolutely. Da, 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 da. And he, Luke is like, we never have done this. Have you been hanging out with Seelie? Yeah, no, I don't know. This is, he just looks up in the stands. Seely, did you do this? And Seely's like, or, or, you're welcome. <laughs> nice. All right. At the end of her turn, she will take seven points of damage from the sandstorm. It is then going to be the Crocker Rock's turn. So it's going to tough it out plus personality to see if it can attack. Rollo, rollo, rollo. Ooh, that is a six. Guess what? He doesn't have a lot of personality. I had a feeling. In fact, he has none. So okay, it's just cool. a flat six. So he can't attack. So instead, he's going to shape the field. Oh, that's what he could decide to do. <laughs> and it's a seven. So he'll get to add a tag and you'll get to add one. Okay. So you can either add one from personality or from might because he's using might. Might. So the Crocker Rock is going to add the tag M6. He's going to add Mighty to the field so he gets a plus one to his might-based attack rolls. What tag would you like to add to the field? How is Curlia taking advantage of the situation here? We're going to use Misdirect. Okay, so she's adding M7. Are you making it so that it's going to ignore defense or special defense with might-based attacks? Defense. All righty. That is going to take us back to you with Curlia. Uh, we still have double team up, right? Yes. Okay. Um, and if you don't, you put it back up. Cool. Right. <laughs> um, we're going to use Magical Leaf. All right, a Magical Leaf. I really hope she can get one good hit. Roll to hit. Yes, she can. Uh, nine plus all that personality. you love to see it. That's going to be a full success. Roll that 2d6 plus seven. Thirteen. 13. All right, so that's going to be 8 double to 16 points of super effective grass damage. She's not just dancing on the piano. She's free. Luca's like, look at her. She's free. Look at her. She's dancing all over the place. The legs are so much longer, she doesn't have to just kind of scoot around anymore. That is going to be her turn then, mm-hmm. as she will take seven more points 
of Sandstorm Damage. And then that will take us to the Crocker Rock as Mortimer says, all right, look, Crocker Rock, just stay focused and get a crunch. He fails his tough it out plus personality roll with another six. Yes. So he's just going to shape the field again because he doesn't have anything else he can do. Oh, I hate that he's getting so many shapes of fields, though. But he whiffs it with a natural two. Whoa. All right. I've so been there. You have your choice. You've got two tags on the field right now on your side from his last one. Uh, since that was a natural two, you get two tags. Whoa. Yeah. When you whiff it that hard, it's bad. But it will be attached to. To the Crocker Rock. No, no, no. It's attached to Roxanne. Well, no. It's it's attached to the Crocker Rock. As because long as he's in the game? Yes. Okay. As long as he's in the game, it'll stay because it was one that he tried to do. She's just getting to set it up. So she can keep her personality tag or she could swap it out and get two other tags, miter personality, depending on what you want to do. But you get two tags and your personality one's almost up anyway. So Yeah. Let's use M4 Mitigate. Mitigate. So when they use moves of their type, one designated Pokemon, one's of the same type, have to roll the damage twice, take the lower result. Are you doing that with ground? Crocorock is a dual ground and dark. So which which type would you like to nullify more so? Let's do dark. Cool. All right. That's one of the tags. Which other one do you want to add? Let's refresh M7. All right. So M7 is going to be fresh. What happens? What does this look like? How does Curlia redirect in such a way that Crocorock totally whiffs it so bad? He was trying to use a bunch of mud and rocks and stuff to try to block her in. She just plants a big old kiss on a snout. <laughs> just a big old kiss on the snoot, uh-huh. and he's so confused. He's like, what is happening? That his little burglar mask falls off for a second. <laughs> She's got to, like, put it back on. He's like, whoa, I thought that was part of my face. What am I doing? Nah, it's not, man. The crowd is like, ooh. I mean, all except Max and Fanta are ready to just take that crocodile <laughs> off like, to an alley. They're like, do we have, we'll go, we'll go take him out. <laughs> <laughs> They're throwing popcorn. Oh my gosh, that boo! Ah! Car, car, yeah. car! All right, that was his turn. Did not go the way he hoped for. As Mortimer says, "Ooh, okay, that was that was rough, buddy." All right, and then it is Luca's turn. We're gonna bring out Tarzan. All right, cool. So main action, you are swapping out Roxanne, and then would you like to do anything as an extra action? I don't think he has any extra action. He does now. It's Leaf Blade and Mega Drink? Correct. He can use them in either Strong Style or Agile Style because they are mastered moves for him now. Oh, cool. Well, then let's do Leaf Blade. All right. An Agile Style Leaf Blade. So he's going to make this quick strategic strike with his Leafy Blades. Go ahead and roll to hit. I feel like he's almost like, I know my trainer said I couldn't have my sword, but... But... He, like, just produces a sword of his own making of leaves and vines. (laughs) Eleven. Eleven. Excellent. That is going to be a full success. So it deals half the amount of dice damage rounded up. So it's going to be instead of 3d6, it's 2d6 plus his attack and stab. So 2d6 plus seven. Seventeen. All right. And he's ignoring the defense. Yowza. All right, so that is going to be 17 double to 34 points of damage from that Agile-style Leaf Blade as he sprints from the Pokeball, does a sweet anime run, and slices up with his Leafy Blade. So cool. Nice. At the end of the turn, he is going to take 10 points of damage from the Sandstorm. A big hit as Tarzan comes out swinging with with this makeshift Leaf Blade. Not the souvenir sword, but he's making it work. I it's, mean, the, it's like the leaves off of his wrists that he's using now. It's like a good old West Side Story battle, yo. Oh, yes. They're rumbling for sure. That is then going to take us back to the Crocker Rock as Mortimer says, all right, now shake it off, shake it off. Use crunch. Five plus four now is going to be nine, so a mixed success on his crunch, and he does have to roll the damage twice and take mm-hmm. the lower from your shaping of the field. Oh, boo, yeah. 12, ooh, or eight. So it's going to be the eight. So 12 points of damage is going to be 11 against Tarzan. 
That is the Crocker Rock's turn, which is going to take us back to Tarzan. We'll do Leaf Blade in strong style. All right, a strong style Leaf Blade. Cool beans, go ahead and roll to hit. Ten. Ten, a full success. Okay, doing that in the strong style. He's going to roll double the amount of dice. So that is going to be 6d6. Wow, that's intense. Selling out on a big hit. How many times do they do that in a fight? As many as he has the PP to do it. It costs two PP instead of one each time that he does mm. one in stronger agile style. So right now he's got eight PP remaining of Leaf Blade specifically. 28. 28. All right, that's your 66 plus seven. Oh, no, that wasn't plus seven. Okay, so it's going to be 35. Yeah, 35. All right, so uh, minus I rolled like three sixes. Uh, a huge hit. What is this massive swing with this strong style? Because that is going to be, wait, you, you said 35? Uh, 28 plus seven. Yeah, 35. So that minus his defense, that's going to be 32 still, double to 64 points. But I still have the tag for the defense. Oh, correct. So <laughs> you're absolutely right. Yikes. It doesn't even, okay, so 35. Yeah, you're ignoring defense. So 35 double to 70 points. What is this massive <laughs> blow? Strong style. Tarzan completely sells out. Soon. What Big happens? Old hit. What happens is, in true Rumble style, he sees Roxanne and he turns away from the fight, but then he sees a big boulder Pokemon get killed and he turns and he just knives him. <laughs> no. I don't even know who was who in that scenario. I know, I don't either. Let me try again. Um, <laughs> Luca says, show no mercy. The blades are strong within thee. And then he just goes straight to the skull. Um, <laughs> No, no, no. Luca goes, show no mercy. The blades are strong within thee. Fight, fight, young leafy man. And <laughs> Tarzan looks like he's going to walk away, but then does the quickest 180 turn. And we hear, da na 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 <laughs> <laughs> And we realize the leaf blade went straight into a uh, very precious artery. <laughs> It does the anime. You just yeah. see like the slash across the screen and you see Tarzan in like the finished swing pose as the Crocorock just wide-eyed falls over. Da -da -da. Mortimer says, no, 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 thank you. <laughs> All right. Oh, well, oh, okay. You want to make this interesting? I'm already M. I'd love to see you try. All right. All right. Hippowdon. Let's show him how it's done. Oh, no. He sends out a Hapowdon, and the sand stream, which seemed as though it might have been close to dying down, refreshes anew as this massive ground sandy hippo just starts whipping around sand and mud and muck everywhere as it comes out onto the center of the field. Scary. Aha. It is then Mortimer's turn as also the shape the field tags are no longer out there from Crocker Rock. And Mortimer says, okay, okay Hippowdon, uh, Fire Fang. Ooh. Oh. Oh no. With a natural 10. Oh no. So that is gonna be 16. So 15 double to 30 points of super effective is. fire damage. There it is. To Tarzan, who also at the end of his last turn took seven points of damage from the sandstorm. Freaking sandstorms. Give me a break in the, what are we in the Sahara? says Luca, and again, kind of got to shake his mouth out because <laughs> it felt very pearl. That was the Hippowdon's turn with a big chomp uh, as Tarzan was still recovering from that big, big swing. What's he going to do now? Let's swap out for two fizz. Let's swap out for two fizz. Let's swap out for two fizz because I don't like that fire move. <laughs> nice. Would you like to use a uh, extra little move on your way out to one of your agile style ones before you use your main action to switch? Or would you like for Toofus to come out and immediately start to rage? Your choice. Oh, Toofus come out and immediately start to rage. All right, cool. So Lucas says, all right, Tarzan, get back in here. Toofus, let's show him how it's done. Crocodile! All right. That is going to be 
Luca's turn as Tufus comes out and begins to rage. What's his rage do again, John? He's going to add six extra damage to any of his attacks. And as he comes out, he's going to take ten points of damage from the sandstorm. But why? Why? What is up with the love for the sand? <laughs> it's sticky and it gets everywhere. That will then take us to the Hippowdon's turn. Mortimer says, all right, well, let's see about this. Hippowdon, Ice Bay. That is going to be a full success with an 11. So that is going to be 17 minus two fists defense. So 14 double 28 points of damage. This doesn't make sense. He I'm hit. not vulnerable to ice. Oh, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. No, he's not. No, he's not. No, he's not. <laughs> Well, okay, so well, here's what happens. My life. Here's what happens. I cannot no. believe that just happened. No, you're absolutely right. Sorry, I, I totally was like, oh, he's part dragon now, but no, he's neutral against ice. Mortimer goes for that, but it is not super, super effective. It deals 14 points of damage. Ho, 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 I got ahead of myself. You of were course. so much fun being the villain. I as well. <laughs> You come in and do 70 points of damage to one of the gym leader's Pokemon in a single hit, he's gonna he's gonna show you a little something. Fair. But <laughs> that's hilarious. Alright, so that is the Hippowdon's turn. It is then Luca's turn. Fishy friend! Fishy friend! Fishy friend! Says Luca. <laughs> Alright. And Tufus is gonna go to use Ficious Rend. So go ahead and roll for Tufus to hit. He's got plus five from his might and also having the wide lens. 11. 11, a full success. Go ahead and roll that damage. Vicious Ren, gonna be 3d6 plus 28. <laughs> 12 plus 28. 40. 40, okay. So, Woza. All right, that is gonna be 34 doubled to 68 points of damage to the Hippowdon. Little anchovies are falling from the sky. With Everybody, a, put out your pizza! With a huge chomp, Tufus just <laughs> comes into the side and just starts wrenching back and forth with those watery, saliva teeth. And, and the crowd does, is like, oh! And Pearl does, you know, have a little confetti cannon of anchovies. <laughs> <laughs> I I don't know why I didn't anticipate you turning Fishes Rind into Fishy Friend. Fishy I don't know. Friend. Fishy <laughs> Friend. Oh, it makes me think about the Preds when we throw the catfish. That's oh what gosh. Pearl's doing right now. Amazing. She's she's throwing a whisk cash out That's onto the my battlefield. Fishy Friend. <laughs> yeah, the entire audience is like, oh, and even Mortimer's like, goodness <laughs> gracious. Oh my god. <laughs> what is that? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, okay, look. We can't mess around. All right, go for the super effective one. Hippowd on Thunderfang, which is just barely a mixed success with a seven total. So that is 13, so 10 points of electric damage as he's like, wait, this is a croconaut, right? That should be super effective. What? What is happening? And can Lucas say something gutsy? Sure. Huh, looks like I'm not the only one with some rare Pokemon connections in this town, huh? Roll to perceive motive real quick as he just shouts out that little nugget. I don't think he shouts it out, to be fair. Sure, but like he says it directly to him, right? Yeah. So that he could hear it? Yeah. Ten. Ten. He sees that Mortimer seems confused by that and not oh. sure exactly what he's trying to say. Okay, uh, fair. <laughs> All right. That's fine. Vagueness can be worked well for us in that cause. <laughs> it's not Pearl for a moment. Oh, also, at the end of Tufus's last turn, he took 10 points of damage from the sandstorm, sure. I should say. But he then took that 10 just now from that Thunder Fang, as Mortimer is perplexed by the fact that it was not super effective. But it is then Tufus's turn oh, once again. All right. Um, fishy friends. All right. Go ahead and roll for fishy friend. Oh, great. 11. 11, another full success. Go ahead and roll that 3d6 plus 28. Dear night. 12 plus 28, again. 12 plus 28. Okay, so that's going to be another 40. 40. So 34, double two, 68 points of damage once again. And when I tell you <laughs> that this Hippowdon has two health left, <laughs> just know that that's, that's where we're at right now I from the big boy. It. 
I love it. <laughs> Big boy came to play. <laughs> wow. Do not mess around. Woof da. Okay. Ay, ay, ay. What okay. All right. Well, uh, with that, yeah, the Hapowodon looks so bad. <laughs> Tufus takes 10 points of damage. Okay. From the sandstorm as it continues whipping around. Sand is like blasting from the Hippowdon, like into his face, and he We're does not care. Mud. We're yeah. making straight up mud oh. in his eyes. Doofus is making mud, that's yeah, right. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, look, maybe, maybe something didn't quite land last time. I just go for another Thunder Fang with a nine. So that's gonna be another 13, so 10 points of damage to Doofus. He's thriving off of it now. It is Luca's turn. Um, so if we get this guy out, we have one more left. Well, theoretically two more since Wait, uh, he asked if he wanted him to make it interesting and Luca said, yeah, sure. Oh, oh, oh. This was making it interesting. Oh. The fact that it had all those extra goodies. This did not go like Mortimer intended. Oh. <laughs> Hippowdon did not last as long as he had hoped he would. I see. Okay, um, then I'm not going to swap out. Uh, let's do another fishy friend. All right, another fishy friend. Go ahead and roll to hit. That's another 10. Another 10. All right, that is another full success. Go ahead and just for funsies, see how much it is. You <laughs> only got two health left, but let's just find out. Six plus 28. Great, yeah. So it's going to be 28 doubled to 56 points. It's enough to do the job. Bye-bye. You're not even walking out with a limp. You're not able to walk out. As he calls, he hip out on back. He says, all right, well, uh, yeah, that, that, uh, that sure was interesting. Okay. All right. Well, Don Fan, come on out there. Let's rough him up. Darfan? Don Fan. He sends out. A little elephant. Aww, I don't want to hit an elephant. Jonah. But he looks mean. But I like elephants. Oh, no, I don't like this one. <laughs> I've never seen it before in my life. So it is then going to be Mortimer's turn as he's going to tell the Don fan, all right, all right, okay. Let's just try to change something together here. Uh, use a rollout. The natural 10. Put a one on the damage. That is going to be... 11, so eight points of damage to Tufus. Let's try to get Bonnaroo out here. Okay, so main action, you're going to swap out Tufus for Bonnaroo. Yeah. He says, come on back, buddy. Don't worry. We'll get you back out there. And he sends out Bonnaroo the Ivysaur. Booyah. Start. She hey, just stands unmoving there in the middle of the battlefield. Those hypnotoad eyes just wob, 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 wob. The entire audience is transfixed for a moment as she comes out onto the field. And he says... My full expectation is for you to last two rounds, and that's okay. You'll do your job. Proud, proud of you no matter what. <laughs> nice. And she's like, cool. I'm down for that, man. <laughs> Thank you for not pushing it. Great. Uh, if you would like, she also has battle styles now, so she could do an agile style confusion. Yes, please. All right. Go ahead and roll two hit. That's a nine. Nine. Okay, so that will be a mixed success. So it's just going to be a D6 plus two. Six. All right, minus its special defense. That's just going to be three points of damage, but you know, it gets the party Heck started. Yeah. Welcome to my sandstorm. Great. So she comes out and hits just a little confusion to test the waters there, the agile style. The Don fan is still rolling around, but that is going to be her turn. And at the end of it, she will take five points of damage from the sandstorm, at which point it dies down. Thank goodness. I was so over it. <laughs> And now the Don fan is locked into doing its rollouts. So that's what he's going to do. Nabbing a mixed success with an eight. It's going to deal 14 minus her defense. So 11 points of damage to Bonnaroo. As the Don fan rolls around and makes contact, it then comes back to Bonnaroo. Bullet seed? Yes. 10. 10. Oh, nice. A full success with Bullet Seed. Oh, also, will you roll 2d6 to see if Effect Spore went off when she got hit by the rollout? Gladly. It's just a total of 7 flat. Okay, cool. No worries. All right, but you are going to hit with that Bullet Seed, so go ahead and roll that d6 plus 3. Uh, 7. So that is going to be two super effective points of damage after its defense. Go ahead and roll to see if it hits again. I rolled a 4. A four. Excellent. So it will hit oh, again. Oh, great. Fantastic. Okay. It's an eight total. 
All right, eight. So that is going to be four super effective points of damage. Total of six now. Go ahead and roll to see if it hits again. It's one. Okay, so six super effective points of damage to the Don Fan from two hits with the Bullet Seed. That will take us back to the Don Fan, who's going to go for rollout number three. Just barely getting the mix success with a seven on that one. All right, so that is going to be 12 points of damage to Bonnaroo. Roll to see if effects four hits. Two ones. All right, so if it no- had to be at some happens. point in this, I'm glad it was then. <laughs> yes, and that is his third rollout in a row. Then it is back to Bonnaroo. All right, let's do another bullet seed. All right. Oh, yikes. It's a failure. Oh, no, a full fail? It's just a six. Oh, a six. Yeah, that is not going to do it, unfortunately. Oh, Uh, no. She tries to set up to get in a a better position to shoot this bullet seed off, but the Dawn fan is already there with its next attempt at a rollout, which is going to be a mixed success with an eight. This time dealing 21 points of damage. Oh, no. As that is the fourth in its rollout chain. Can I try to do a super potion on L? A super potion on L? Yeah. Yeah, but then can I use my confusion still? Yeah, absolutely. Cool. What'd you get back from that super potion? It's just a 14. Uh, I'm going to try to roll that confusion. Okay, so you're going to do an agile style confusion with Bonnaroo. Oh, boo to the freaking yaw. Ooh, what you got? I just rolled an 11 flat. Ooh, an 11 flat. That's enough to confuse yep, it. Yep, yep, Ooh, you felt it. I did. You I really felt, felt it. felt it in your bones. Yeah. Okay, nice. Fantastic. Go ahead and roll that D6 plus five. <laughs> it's a one. All right, three points of damage, but the main thing is the Don fan is confused. All right, that is going to be Bonnaroo's turn then. So Don Fan's going to do damage in its confusion, but it could still hit my Pokemon. It is going to, at the top of its turn, roll to see if it can act or if it is going to expend its main action, hurting itself in its confusion. So that is Bonnaroo's turn with that super potion and confusion. Uh, go ahead, roll to see the number of rounds that Don Fan will be confused. Ah. One. All right. Uh, a single round of confusion. Ah, oh, come on. Well, let's see if it makes the most of it. He's going to roll to see if he hurts himself in his confusion or if he gets that last rollout. With a two, Don Fan hurts itself in its confusion and does not have an opportunity to hit Bonnaroo. Woo, go Bonnaroo. He's going to deal eight points of damage to himself in his confusion. And that is Mortimer's turn as he's just, he just face palms at that. He's oh, we're so <laughs> close. We're so close on that one. All right. Get out of there, Bonnaroo. That was really risky, bud. Bonnaroo's coming out and I'm swapping out for Tarzan. All right. So Tarzan bounds back onto the field. I'd like to do an agile Mega Drain. All right. An agile style Mega Drain. Go ahead and roll two hit. No. I just rolled two ones. Two ones, unfortunate. Uh, Tarzan just fumbles a bit, uh, actually trips over the Don fan, which was still rolling and boom, coming to a thud. So he does not put himself in a good position there. So Mortimer says, all right, let's, let's, let's capitalize on this. Let's, let's get ourselves in a good spot. And the Don fan wants to get some passive damage going again. So he's going to whip up a sandstorm while Tarzan is collecting himself. So the sandstorm is back in action. Of course it is. But then it is going to be Tarzan's turn. All right, let's try Mega Drain again. Strong style. All right, cool. So go ahead and roll to hit with the Mega Drain with the strong style. Uh, It's a nine. A nine? Okay, so that is going to be a mixed success. So you're going to get to roll 4d6 plus two. 17. 17, all right. So that is going to be 14 doubled to 28 super effective points of damage. And Tarzan is going to get back 14. At the end of his turn, he's then going to take the 10 points of damage, which will knock him back down. So he will be at 42 health remaining. That will then take us back to the Don fan who gets a bonus to his next attack since Tarzan used a strong style move. So that is going to be a full success with his bulldoze. With an 11, it's going to be 17 halved as Tarzan resists 
So that is going to be nine points of damage to Tarzan. That will then take us back to Luca. Strong style, Mega Drain. All right, go ahead and roll to hit. Ten. Ten, okay, a full success. So that's going to be 4d6 plus six with your grass damage. Uh, 19. Great, so that is going to be 16 doubled to 32 points of damage to the Don fan who did not enjoy that. And as he then gets back 16, he loses 10. So all in all, uh, he gains a net uh, plus six for the turn. That is then going to take us back to the Don fan as Mortimer says, all right, okay, okay, look, we just got to... He's, he's selling out, so we got to just try for some big hits. Let's see if we can build something else up. Do another rollout. That is going to be a nine with a mixed success. That is going to be 10. So nine points of rock damage to Tarzan. It is then Luca's turn once again as the sandstorm rages and the Don fan moves nimbly throughout. Can I do another strong style Mega Drain? Sure. Oh, it's just a seven. A seven? Well, that's still a mixed success. So you're still getting to roll 4d6 plus two. I'm imagining with the strong style, the Grovile has just planted himself and just as the Dawn fan comes, he takes the hit, but also absorbs some of the energy as it then rolls yeah. off. But he's standing his ground. 14. 14, all right, so that's gonna be 11, doubled to 22 points of super effective damage, which is gonna net Tarzan a plus one for the end of this turn. The Don fan seems to be in a precarious position, but it is now locked into using the rollout. So that is going to come out to a full success. So that is going to be 16 points of rock damage to Tarzan. Wow. We are then back to the big bad Grovile himself. What's he got? Mega Drain, strong style. Nice. He's just like, I will make it easier for you to hit me, but I will stand here and I will suck the life out of you. Yeah. 11. Ooh, a full success. Go ahead and roll that 4d6 plus six. There we go. Finally rolling something good here. 27 total. 27, all right. So that is gonna be 24 doubled to 48 points, which will certainly be enough yes. to knock out the Don fan as he's then gonna get back 18, which will come down to eight for the end of his turn after the sandstorm. But the Don fan is knocked out yes. as Tarzan stands strong. Woo! Oh, vile. It looks like you got me in a tough spot. You could say I'm uh, between a rock and a hard place. The audience laughs. <laughs>, <laughs> but we're going to end this here. Come on, Rampardos. And he sends out his big dinosaur. There he is. He is then going to immediately rush forward for a takedown which is going to be a full success. That is going to deal 20 points of damage oh to gosh. Tarzan. It is then back to Luca's turn. We're pulling out Tarzan. We're going with Roxanne. Okay, back to Roxanne. And then as an action, we're going to do double team. Tarzan gets swapped out for Roxanne. Uh, how much health is he at right now? Roxanne? How much health was Tarzan at? Uh, Tarzan? My dear friend was at three points. Good. All right. Okay. So we're swapping out to Roxanne, who is immediately going to come out and use a double team, putting out a duplicate of herself to avoid this thing's awful rocky head. Uh, putting out some good vibes in the world. That's what I like to say. <laughs> All right. That is going to be Luca's turn as Roxanne will then take five points of damage from the sandstorm. Of course she will. Oh, also, the Rampardos took recoil damage from using takedown. Of course, of course. Lest I forget. But it is going to try to use Bulldoze on Roxanne. Oh, dang, but not even with its its good might. That is only, let's see, a natural three. So that's only six total. So just completely misses, does not even hit her duplicate. Oh, great, awesome. All right, that was its turn. Then it's back to Roxanne. All right, we're going to use um, Magical Leaf. All right, a magical leaf. Go ahead and roll to hit. It's a nine. A nine. Okay, so a mixed success. So that is just going to be 2d6. Nine. All right, so that is going to be six double to 12 points of super effective grass damage. At the end of her turn, she takes five more damage from the sandstorm. And the Rampardos is then going to use an agile style sandstorm and bulldoze. That bulldoze is going to hit with a mixed success of an eight. Does it hit her double team? 
roll to see. It does not. It does not hit the double team. Unfortunate, as it was also maximum damage. That is going to be 21 points of damage. Oh, man. As the sandstorm rages, that will then take us back to Luca. Let's go into Bonnaroo. Okay, so you're going to use the main action to swap into Bonnaroo. Yeah, and let's go ahead and try Confusion, I guess. Okay, cool. So uh, Agile-style Confusion from Bonnaroo. It's just a nine. A nine? Okay, so a mixed success, so a D6 plus two. Six. All right, six, so that's going to be three points of damage to the Rampardos as she just... Ah! Get ready to die, kid. She's a little worse for wear, but she's given what she's got, and she's taken one for the team. At the end of her turn, she also takes five points of damage from the Sandstorm. As Mortimer says, all right, Rampardos, take down. That's going to be an 11, so that will be 20 points of damage to Bonnaroo as the Rampardos also takes recoil damage, but 20 points will knock Bonnaroo out. She just kind of does the uh, fall to the knee as Luca calls her back. He's like, you did great. You did great. Thanks for that. All right. And who's he going to send out next? Toofus. All right. Toofy comes out to play. Dino versus Dino. And what is Toofus going to do? We're going to do this thing that Luca does where he gives people advantage and then pulls from a personal rule book. <laughs> okay. Now, so are you saying that you want to use, you're using his his tier four loyalist feature where he can give the advantage. Uh, but then are you also saying you want to use his tier three where he can uh, destroy use a, someone? Yes. Use a move that is uh, one above its current move tier? Yes. All right. Well, that'll give uh, Tufus a, a hydro pump. Okay, great. If you uh, if you so choose. I so choose. All right. He just brings out a fire hydrant. He just goes to uh, unleash. So go ahead and uh, roll to hit with advantage for your hydro pump. Oh, my gosh. I've never done that in my whole life. What? I just rolled three sixes. Are you serious? I am not joking. Oh. I've never done that in my whole life. I just rolled three sixes. <laughs> Scary for some of those who believe that that's not a good number combo, but uh, also incredible. Oh my gosh. Go ahead and roll 10 D6 damage. It's, it's a triple crit. Oh my gosh. Wait, if I crit it, it would just be 10 D6. It doesn't add another. Right, 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 right. Okay, right. but also 10 D6 is a horrifying thought. Yeah, 10 D6. That is insane. Uh, 32 on the dice. 32 on the dice. So it's it's so infrequent that he uses special attack, but I believe he's got plus three from special attack, three from stab, two from favorite type, an extra three from his elemental extra damage. So 11. I've gotten 43 so far. Yeah, because it's 11 plus your 32. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yeah, so that that is correct. This is insane. 43. Woo! Whoa, Zep. He's not raging, and it's not a bitey one or one that sheer force adds extra to. So it's going to be 39 doubled. Oh, my mercy in heaven. To 78 points of damage. Oh, my mercy. A massive hydro pump. A huge blow. <laughs> Just, he saw the fire hydrant and just bit the top off of it. Well, it's just, it's like a cannon, a cannon of water coming straight from his mouth. 78 points of damage Oh! as the Rampardos gets knocked back. But the audience sees it digs the feet in Whoa. and begins pushing through the hydro pump, just Whoa. taking that super effective hit and then rushing forward with its rock hard skull coming straight for Tufus as Mortimer yells out for a last attempt at a takedown. The audience's jaws are to the floors. That is going to be a mixed success with an eight to hit. So just even though it is battered and bashed from the hydro pump, it runs through the water to make contact directly with Tufus as the hydro pump comes to an end. And it deals 21 points of damage to Tufus. Also at the end of his turn, 
Toothless took 10 points of damage from the sandstorm. <gasps> no. Oh, guys, this is so tight right now. It is Luca's turn. Oh the Rampardos has just made contact with that rock hard skull right there with Toothless. What's he going to do? Fishy friend. All right, he goes Call to use on every Fish's creature rend. in the ocean right now, Two Fist. Do you want to use his other advantage one? Yes, please. Can right. I? Uh, yes, because he's got a number times per day equal to his instinct score, which is three. Oh, thank goodness, because we really have only six hit points left, guys. Woo! It's kind of scary how many hit points the dinosaur had. Okay, 10 plus all the stuff. So 15 total. Okay. Uh, yes, that will do it. So now go ahead and roll 3d6 plus 22. Also, I just realized we haven't even been accounting for Strong Jaw, where for his biting moves, he can roll twice and take the higher one. Well, that just shows you what a good Pokemon he is. So if you want to just go ahead and roll the 3d6 two times and take the higher of those. I don't think we'll need it. I'd probably not. All right. <laughs> um, 9, 10, 11, 12, 22, uh, uh, so 34. 34. All right. So that is going to be 31 double to 62 points of damage. With 62 points, what is this vicious bite, this vicious rend, this fishy friend? How does it take out the Rampardos? Toofus jumps in the air. He gets so much air. We see it in pure anime style, but then jumps and bites straight on his tail and whips him around the entire arena and crashes into the wall into the wall right next to the stage where Mortimer sits atop the rock and roll throne. Mm -hmm. As the dust settles, Tufus is there, chest and body heaving. <sighs> At this point, it is night outside and a little bit of the moonlight shines into the arena as the crowd is going nuts. As Luca's team stands by him, he holds the fainted ivy sore. Tufus and Tarzan and L and Roxanne begin to glow in the moonlight. Oh my goodness! He's getting an EGOT! <laughs> That's what Pearl says in the stands. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> she realizes it. Roxanne grows even taller, her little tutu now coming into a flowing, elegant dress as she evolves into a Gardevoir. L, the Sneasel, who's been here so and been loyal long. for so long. As the moonlight glints off of the razor claw that is hanging around her neck, this headdress appears on her as the claws grow sharper and she evolves into a Weavile. Tarzan, letting out a cheer of victory for his battle brother, becomes this even larger, more prehistoric also looking lizard with this big, bushy, leafy tail and these leafy blades coming off of his arms as he evolves into a septile. And Tufus letting out his roar of fury. His form becomes even longer. All of his appendages having more of this sense of being able to just either be up on two legs or break out on all fours into a terrifying feral gator sprint. <laughs> his mohawk is even more pronounced and the spikes on his back are even bigger, almost making a fan shape on his back. The normal for alligators you would see are more bottom heavy, but he is broad shouldered and <laughs> those big claws on his hands just clinch the dirt in front of him as his massive maw becomes larger and filled with an obscene amount of teeth. <laughs> Tufus has evolved into a Feraligator.
Hello, friends. Jonah here to say thank you for listening to Postcards from Pearl. Thank you for bearing with us during the long wait leading up to this big gym battle episode. August was really wild on our end with Sarah and I both transitioning to new jobs. And if you haven't heard yet, we're having a baby. So we've had a lot going on getting ready for that big life change coming in January. And we are so excited. We're still going to keep PFP going. We are very committed to seeing this story through. And we are continuing to build up our backlog as much as we can for when recording becomes difficult with a newborn around, but we do ask that you please continue to be patient with us as the release schedule will continue to be wonky for a while. We'll be bringing you new episodes as frequently as we can, though, I promise. I'd like to take a moment to tell you about our fabulous partner, Dice Envy. This week, check out the new Prismatic Storm set. They've got a blend of cool hues infused with shimmering light blue micro glitter. I could definitely see some of the Teen Squad ladies like Roxanne or Zilla rolling with these. You could get 10% off of your purchase at Dice Envy by going to DiceEnvy.com slash QuestCo or by using the promo code QuestCo at checkout. That's Q-U-E-S-T-C-O for 10% off of your entire order. If you're a fan of what we do here on Quest Company Jr. and you want to help us out, please go to our page on the Apple Podcasts app or Spotify or wherever you listen to your podcast and leave us a rating and review. It is a huge help to us and we read every review that comes in. And if you really love what we do here at Quest Company Jr. and you want to take that next step in supporting us, please consider becoming a Patreon subscriber. For as little as $2 a month, you can help us with necessary expenses, help us continue to improve the quality of the show, and get access to exclusive content and patron Awards. If you'd like to give us that support, you could do so at patreon.com slash quest company podcast. You can find the link to the Patreon on our website, questcompanyjunior.com. If you'd like to contact us, you could do so directly through our website or by finding us on Instagram and Twitter at Questco Junior. You can also hang out with us on our Quest Company Discord and get all the latest updates on Pocket Monster Fight there. The link to that is on our website and Twitter. We know that word of mouth is the best way to get people listening to a new podcast, and that is especially true for independent shows like ours. So we would love to see you posting about the podcast and telling your friends about us. If we see you tweeting about us or posting fan art using hashtag Questco Junior or hashtag Postcards from Pearl, you might get a character named after you on the show. And if you or your kids have fan art of the podcast that you want to share, just make sure when you post it to tag us so that we can see it. Speaking of fan art, we've gotten some more fabulous art sent to us since our last episode. Thank you to Fairy Tale Girl MB at M Burgundy on Instagram for continuing to bless us with a steady stream of Pearl and Luca and Lady M sketches over on the Insta story. I especially love the Roxanne sketch from last episode, all evolved into a Curlia. If you want to see these great sketches as they're posted, make sure you're following MB and keep an eye on that story. Quest Company Jr. is a proud member of Podicon Go, a group of independent podcasts supporting high-quality content that's fun for the whole family. Podicon Go is your reliable corner of the internet for the kind of podcast that everyone can enjoy, with shows ranging from animal facts to stories to audio dramas to RPG actual plays and more. Check them out at podicongo.com. I'd also like to take a moment to thank the awesome artists whose music is featured in this episode. Thank you to Foolboy Media for the song Video Game Land. Thanks to Pokenerd Scott for the song Spatial Slam, Jawlock Chomp, Trainers with a Twist, Dragon's Roar, Fungus Fighters, Team Smoke Pit, and Where There's Smoke. So many original tracks. Thank you, Scott. Thank you to Zane for the songs Battle Champion Brendan and Team Plasma's Secret Maneuvers. Thank you to Maker for Master Mustard Battle. Thank you to Glitch X City for Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire Rival Battle theme remix. Thank you to Michael and Game Chops for Pokemon League. And thank you to Protodome for On the Origin of Species and May I Have This Swords Dance. And thank you to TabletopAudio.com for providing the ambient sounds. That's all for me, so let's get back and see if Pearl and Luca can get any more information from Mortimer now that Luca's gotten the grunge badge. Thank you for joining us here at Quest Company Jr. Luca's victory against Mortimer. He runs out onto the field to go embrace the newly evolved Tufus, who, again, to, to help you picture, 
looks like a Feraligator, but with the aspects of both a Spinosaurus and Sarcosuchus dinosaurs, just the most terrifying, awful parts of those all put together. But he runs out to cuddle with his big buddy, give him a big old hug, and the rest of his Pokemon follow. Tarzan, L, Roxanne, and, well, I think at this point, Tarzan is like a whole thing Ponaroo, uh, but she just gives at it ah, in support. <laughs> uh, but they're all there, and he, he just has a moment of, yes, yes, oh, I'm so proud of you, all of you. That was amazing. Oh, my gosh. And amongst this big scene of hugs and emotion up in the stands, Fanta and Maximilian both are just like, boom. Just jaws dropped on the floor as they see Roxanne freshly evolved into this Gardevoir. They're in love! <laughs> but they have this moment reveling in their victory. The crowd continues to cheer. Mortimer picks up his crutches and stands from his rock throne, gesturing for Luca to come up to the stage. And so he does with his Pokemon in tow. Mortimer shakes his hand and then plucks the shining badge from his guitar and holds it aloft. I now present Lucas Salvatore with the Grunge Badge. With this, the Kanoko Pokemon League officially recognizes him as a Tier 3 Pokemon trainer. And he presents him with the badge as the crowd once more erupts into applause. Mortimer motions to the tunnel to the green room and Luca follows him. And Luca then gestures for you to come along behind him. Oh, don't worry about me, the cleaning little man. <laughs> following, following. you <laughs> There were like 12 different dialects rolled into that. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And I'm just like, come on, guys, that's our cue. And are you I following drag... as little cleaning man or are you following? Yeah, I'm dragging it. I'm following as little cleaning man. And I'm like waving to the crowd and people are like, oh, is that Luca's dad? I thought he looked different. <laughs> <laughs> he's smaller in person. Yeah, he's much smaller than I thought. Oh, my gosh. That's hilarious. I see a little empty pipe. I pop out. Woo. <laughs> little green pipe. Woo. <laughs> Pop up, look around. No, thank you. Back down. <laughs> it's a sewer pop up guy. All right, so <laughs> you follow as a uh, little maintenance man. Uh, you, you're like, Fanta, come on. <laughs> ah, ah, ah. You follow as Luca is here in the green room. A familiar space to you with all of the rock and roll memorabilia, the mini fridge, etc. But Mortimer comes in. And he goes over to the desk and he pulls out the rest of Luca's gym reward, the 6,000 Poke Dollars, along with TM81 Bulldoze and TM32 Sandstorm. Oh, yeah. Is Luca saying anything to him at this point or what's what's happening here before Pearl comes into the room? There's a brief moment. Nice job out there. Yeah, you too. I, uh, I was uh, not expecting that, but, you know, sometimes... Uh, you know, we're not really supposed to, I guess. But, you know, if we somebody come in who's obviously uh, above their rank like that, well, it's 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 fun to make it interesting. So, uh, yeah, good work out there. Thanks. Uh, it was really, really fun. I've noticed you got some interesting Pokemon on your team. Yeah, I mean, uh, I got a strong team. Uh, you know, we, we train hard, and, uh, you know, I, I like to think we've got some, some solid skills. Yeah, I didn't know Rampardos were even alive, or I thought they were extinct. Yeah, I mean, uh, most most people do think that, I guess. Uh, How'd you I, get yours? Well, I he was actually uh, a gift, uh, a mystery gift, really. Uh, the Pokeball just kind of showed up at my uh, doorstep one day, and he was a well, he was a little cranny dose then, but you know, he was he was left there for me, and there wasn't really a. It, anything else. I didn't see anybody drop him off or anything like that, but he showed up at my door, so I just figured I'd take care of him the best I could, and he's a great Pokemon. Can I read his intentions? Like, is that truthful? Sure. Go ahead and roll for Luca to perceive motive. That's a 10. A 10. Okay. So with a 10, a full success, you can ask two from the perceive motive list. Um, you can tell me if this is too much, but are you hiding your connections with Team Nasty? Mm, okay, so it, what are you hiding? What are you hiding, yeah. Okay, just as Luca just takes a look at him reading the body language and everything, he does seem to be telling the truth about the Rampardos as far as Luca can tell. Mortimer seems pretty at ease right now, and, uh, you know, it seems like, you know, he's a answered this question about Rampardos before since it is uh, rare and certainly not frequently heard of. And then 
as far as Luca can tell, there does not seem to be any like team nasty connection, no like secret mustache or anything like that 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 he's aware of. He seems pretty at ease. That's that's pretty cool, man. Um, and and Luca is now at ease. Okay, like Luca's trusting this. Yeah. Um, how'd you break your leg? Well, that's a good question, actually. And at this point, I feel like Pearl enters. All right, you sneaky mouse. We've smelled your rotten cheese long enough. Sealy, lock him up. Luca, I got your back. Let's go. She starts rolling up her little uniform. <laughs> no, no, Pearl, Pearl, Pearl. That's right. We will take you as our prisoner, and we will show no mercy. No, no, Pearl. I... <laughs> I, I don't think to we need jump to actually. On the couch for a pummel drive. <laughs> He's like, no, no, no. I, I don't think we need to do that. I don't think we need to do that, Pearl. What? And Mortimer's like, well, I'm sorry. What? Yeah, that's right. Pretend like you don't know me, just like you don't know the evil that you have been fueling. Hey, imagine these chips are you, and I start to smash them with my elbow. <laughs> uh, 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 you start uh, smashing. You just pour out some of his spicy yeah. chips uh, on his uh, little uh, side uh, table uh, next to the couch and just start hitting them all with your elbow. And now I got a cheese test on my elbow. Oh, do, 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 do. And Seely just like just starts licking up some of the crumbling. She's like, oh, oh, oh. I t- I know they're spicy. <laughs> Mortimer's like, wait, um, hold on, Pearl. Yeah, hi. You Hi. never answer my calls, cause you're evil. Uh, okay, all right. I Luke see where like, this is going. Hey man, uh, sis, we've had a. I don't know if you've been following up with some of Pearl's antics, but uh, you know, uh, I think uh, we should actually take a second and talk. If you have a second. Yeah, sure. Let's uh, let's chat. He gestures for y'all to sit down on the couch. But Luca, Luca, what are you thinking here? No, this I, guy, he's dopey. He's fooling you. No, I. He's making you a puppet. Pearl, I, th- I, I think he's the on the strings. up and up. Well, let's let's hear him out. I saw a notebook with mysterious notes, and he's keeping all of his underlings in the dark. You, you go through the levels, and they're like, "What a great guy!" And then in reality, they're living in squalor. Wait, Pearl, did you go talk to the gym trainers? I went through their lockers. I've been doing intel on my own. And Mortimer says, I wait, hold on. Poses. You went through my stuff? What? You went through my stuff? Well, to be fair, I was right in the room, and you didn't say I couldn't, so I did. So you went through my stuff? Kind of, sort of, yes. <sighs> All right. Because you've been using your power for evil! All right, okay. Look, I I understand why you're... Okay, yeah, sure, sit down. Sit down, if it helps, I can't read your handwriting at all. Yeah, I know. My handwriting's terrible. Just, okay. Prove your innocence. Do you want to say that? get in the judge costume. Oort, 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 oort. Yeah, dum, she's, dum. she's she got the white wig and everything. Has a little gavel, yeah. yes. She's put on her robe. Oort, and oort, 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 oort. Yes, she would like a soda. All right. He tosses each of y'all a soda from the mini fridge, and he uh, sets his crutches down, sits in the chair just across from y'all. He says, okay, look. I'd been thinking about the things that you said, all right, after our gym battle, Pearl. Uh, And so I've been trying to keep an eye on things here in Bolet. And a little while back, I was just uh, out one night, uh, out late, and I heard some kind of ruckus going on. And so I went to see what was happening, and uh, there was somebody in an alley whose, well, Pokemon was getting snagged. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was a team nasty person. I don't know if it was a grunt or somebody higher up or what, but there was a lady. Her Pokemon was getting snagged. She yelled out for help. So I start chasing the guy, right? Mm-hmm. So I chase him, follow him to a, to a warehouse, which he just ran straight to. And, uh, well, when I was there, I got ambushed. Oh. Yeah. So, uh. Yikes. There were two people there who were, definitely had to have been higher ups because they had some pretty strong Pokemon and uh, well, they definitely had type advantage so I was uh, in a rough spot. They actually tried to snag my Pokemon but they, they weren't able to. Okay. But, I mean not surprising. My, my Pokemon and I have a really strong bond so look I, I don't know how that would have even been possible but they sure. tried. Sure. But they did knock them all out and uh, well I was, I was running and threw out all of the fracas and everything and slinging attacks back and forth. I, I broke my leg and yeah. That's so, awful. Yeah. 
And things would have been a lot worse if the, uh, well, if the police hadn't showed up right when, uh, well, right when it was all looking pretty bleak, to be honest. Whoa! Yeah, so, um... This is not a good story! <laughs> well, so I got away from the warehouse, and, you know, they were chasing after me, uh, probably so that, you know, I wouldn't be able to tell anybody, but, uh, yeah, so... I broke my phone, I broke my leg... That's why he wasn't calling me, guys! And, uh, yeah... Rough night. Rough night indeed. Yeah, so, um... Hmm, what do you think there, Salvatore? Is he telling the truth? As far as I can tell, yeah. Seems seems to be honest. Yeah, so, after that whole ordeal, you know, I, I told the cops where the warehouse was, and, uh, well, they seized a bunch of stuff that was in there. It seemed like it was mostly just a storage building, though. Uh, it looked like they were able to move some of the stuff out really quickly before... You know, the cops showed up and, and cleared out the rest. So I don't know what happened to the rest of the stuff that was in the warehouse. But, uh, yeah. So thanks for the Team Nasty heads up, I guess. But, um, <laughs> you know, it's it's been a little rough around here. So I was out of commission for a little bit. Uh, I'm sure you probably heard Ammon filled in for me for a little bit. But uh, so I'm back now. I got my cool chair and I'm just on the mend. Why did you go on alone? Why didn't you ask for help? It was just in the moment. It was just one of those things where I heard there was somebody who needed help, and so I just went for it, you know? I didn't have time to, you know, get somebody else. It was happening right then. Sure. Okay. Okay. Huh. Well, now I'm rethinking everything about this trip. <laughs> <laughs> so you thought that I was with Team Nasty? Yeah, totally. I almost got killed by a gym leader. Oh, that's right. I heard, I heard that there was a whole big thing in Criminy City. What was uh, his name? Uh, what was the name again? Meanie? Uh, real mean guy? R swing? S mean Sinatra? 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 Is that his name? I've heard Sinatra is, was supposed to be really mean. <laughs> Leroy? Oh, yeah! Leroy! Yeah. Lucky, lucky Leroy! Taking us down and smiling while he does it. Yeah, I never liked that guy. Um, Tell us the other gem leaders you didn't like. Look, I, I don't talk to everybody super often. I know some of the others are, are closer with each other. I kind of like to keep by myself. Sometimes people annoy me, honestly. But Luke no. Luke is like, I get it. <laughs> I, I respect that. I absolutely respect that. So, I don't know. I uh, Well, I actually heard from the League that there's going to be some investigations into all of us, I'm assuming, uh, if Leroy was, you well, know, we're on happy the take. To, we're happy to give you a glowing recommendation. Thanks. Thanks. Seely, you can change that. out of the judge cast. Oh, no, 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 no. I know it takes a long time to get into. I'm sorry. <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know about the others. Uh, I mean, honestly, some of them I barely ever see. I mean, really, the only other gym leader I see halfway frequently is Lawrence, and that's just because he's right over there in Portobello. Oh, okay. Does he seem like on the up and up? I mean, I like the guy. If, I, if I'm hanging out with any of the other gym leaders, it's usually him. Did you... Oh, man. Before I mean, everything went down with Leroy, did you trust him? No, I never liked the guy. He always seemed kind of shady. Okay. Who else seems shady? <laughs> <laughs> um, bro, he, Luke was like, Pearl, relax. Bro, bro, just... <laughs> be chill. Uh, be we'll, chill, chill, we'll, chill. We're working on it, all right? And also, I feel like Luca would be like, yeah, sorry we judged you. I mean, uh, we, we got to kind of think about it differently now since even we have some shady Pokemon or out of the usual Pokemon. Uh, no, well, no, they're that... literally shady. They are filled with smoke. Wait, uh, yeah, so is that is that what you were talking about with that, uh, well, for alligator now, also, nice, man. Thanks, uh, Again, thanks. that was, yeah. uh, I don't think I've ever seen a, a, a four in one before. That was, that was pretty cool, I'm not gonna lie. Thanks, I'm trying to make a term for it. <laughs> like an EGOT. <laughs> He's like, yeah, so we got Tarzan, Tufus, Roxanne, and L. T R T a treaty? Yeah, T T Y L. <laughs> but Mortimer says, yeah, so um what was the question again? <laughs> I got distracted. No, I think I think he made a good point, Luca. Yeah, I guess just because they maybe have a rare Pokemon doesn't mean they're bad guys. Oh, yeah. No, that takes me back to what I was thinking. Thanks. No, yeah, what's the deal with that? Because the Thunder Fang should have been super effective. So why was it not? Oh, it's because they've been poisoned. No, it's... They're they're dying slowly. They're... We're trying to get them on a good diet to, to offset the poison. They're vapor... It's, it's a poison thing. <laughs> 
We Why are, is she so awful? I forgot. <laughs> it's like two episodes not controlling her. She's really coming out, She's folks. just dying to get out. Yeah, and they're just poisoned. So chaos. They got a lot of salmonella. Well, and we're then, hoping that that's not actually the case and that there's no long-term detriments. Now. Yeah, we got to drink so much tea and brush our teeth to try to offset the poison. So they're, They got injected with a vial and they morphed. They're and vapor- then they have <laughs> little growth <laughs> coming out. Like extra teeth and stuff. They're it's interesting. Vapor variant Pokemon now, basically. You just sipping on that milkshake, Pearl? Yeah, I got one left over. Sorry, was I interrupting, Luca? <laughs> so I don't know what you got told from the league and whatever's going on. But yeah, there's there's these things called vapor variants now because this, this new team who showed up, Team Smoke, has been doing some whacked out experiments and then changing Pokemon's typings and things. So Tufus, the Feraligator, is water dragon type now. The Ivysaur, who I had, is a psychic type. So everything's a little topsy-turvy right now. But the reason we came back here... Because we thought we were evil. Is we... Well, we were trying to figure out if you were shady and uh, uh, we knew that you had a fossil Pokemon too. And that's and, what and, Team Smoke's been working with. And here's the thing. Your fossil Pokemon shouldn't exist. Right, yeah, no fair. I have fair. some fossil Pokemon now, too, but I think that the bad guys are trying to re- revitalize fossil Pokemon to take over the world. All right, sure, yeah, I see your line of logic there. Huh? Yeah. yeah, so because you had one, we thought, oh, not on the up and up, and you don't answer my text messages. So wait, so are you saying you, well, I got a new phone and I lost yeah, most now, of my time. now I know. I can't hold it against you anymore. I'm going to text you right now. It says hi with a couple of emojis and a seal. I'm assuming this is you. Yeah, that's me. Great. Nice. <laughs> Mortimer thinks about that for a second. He's like, well, I mean, yeah, I guess that makes sense then if if I got fossil Pokemon. I mean, come to think of it, I think that all the gym leaders have a fossil Pokemon. We all just got them. What? That doesn't make sense. Yeah, we all, I mean, we all got them around the same time. and They were dropped on your doorstep at the same time? I mean, roughly. I don't know if it was at the exact same moment, but we all got them in roughly the same time frame see, and without any explanation. See, do you that sounds shady, man? Sure, but I also got a cool dinosaur, so I didn't really oh, think yeah, about it yeah. at the time. What if they're programmed to detonate? Well, I hope not. Can we check his pockets? <laughs> the Mortimer's pockets? The Rampardo's pockets. He brings out the Rampardos, who like just has a little soda in hand from the mini fridge. He's sitting on the couch, he's and he's got it in his little T Rex kind of arm. And he's like, Bart, Ram, Ram, Bardos, Ram. As to say, I don't have pockets. He just sips his soda. Uh, that doesn't make sense to me at all, though. Why, why they would be given mysterious fossil Pokemon from someone? I mean, I guess if some of the gym leaders are dirty or with Team Smoke or whatever, and some of them aren't. But see, if they were giving them as a bribe, why didn't they follow up? Have you been ever approached by someone trying to get you onto Team Nasty's side? She asked Mortimer. Team Nasty, no. And uh, if whoever this is, you said Team Smoke also, no. I haven't been approached, at least directly. I don't know, maybe there was a test at some point that I didn't know about, but I've never been directly asked. See, that's why it doesn't make sense, Luca. I mean, I guess maybe... If some of the gym leaders are with them and some of them aren't, but they're working with fossils either way, maybe having all of the gym leaders have a fossil Pokemon or two makes it seem less suspicious for the ones that actually are with them. Mm, kind of hiding I in guess. plain sight kind of thing. I guess. I hear what you're saying, but I don't know if I'm sold. I mean, I guess it'd Do be a you? good way to see, you know, how they are just with their growth and everything in a regular setting and how they compare against, you know, normal Pokemon regularly. Do you have the box that your Pokemon was given to you in? I mean, I've got the the Pokeball. Okay, sure, let's see it. All right. He just pulls out the Pokeball and it's red on the bottom and white on the top. Darn it! He didn't keep his little crate like a baby basket. It's red on the bottom and white on the top. Oh, that's weird. What? With a little skull fossil emblem on the top of it. Do we have another team at play here? It's the same style as like Diablo and Bonnaroo's Pokeballs. Red on the bottom, white on the top with a little emblem. Oh, this is a bad guy Pokeball. Mortimer, this is not good. I take I take pictures. Evidence, evidence crew. <laughs> Exhibit A. Exhibit A, folks. 
Okay, wait, is this, I mean, I This just, is a Team Smoke Pokeball. Okay. So that at least connects it in terms of who is trying to bribe you. Sure, yeah, I, I guess. Or woo you to I the mean, dark but, side. They have cookies, supposedly. <laughs> way, to, way to pull it back. Thank you. TBT. Thank you very much. Come to the dark side, we have cookies. I just got a flashback. Thank you. <laughs> it was very natural. Yeah, okay, all right. I, I, I see what you're saying, and again, at the time, I... At the you know, time, you were a wee babe in the woods. I wasn't. I, okay. I didn't think about it. I you had no were, reason to question it. You were just a, a sweet little little toddler wandering through the woods with a guitar in one hand and a club in the other. <laughs> and now you know you've 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 evolved. You you yourself as a trainer. Yeah, sure. Let's go with that. Okay, cool. Thanks for the yes and. Um, uh, uh, we take pictures. You do. And Mortimer says, yeah, but like Rampardos wouldn't hurt anybody. He's actually like a, a just a, a big, sweet little guy. That's what they all say. And Pardos just looks at you like Ram. And Diablo is sneakily in, in his ball like destroying something. <laughs> no, no, I know what you mean. I feel the same way about my Pokemon, but it doesn't mean... I just, what does it mean? I don't know what it means. I mean, my thought on it is that, you know, no Pokemon is bad. They might have a bad trainer. Yeah, no, I'm just saying it doesn't mean they haven't messed with them. Sure, sure, I did. That's that's fair. You know, like, I don't know necessarily what their plot is, but I don't think they just give it to you by accident. Yeah. I don't think Rampardos knows the whole situation, just like Diablo. I mean, Diablo's just happy if I put something on fire in front of him. Oh, yeah, I mean, like, he just likes running into stuff. Absolutely. Um, so it's not them specifically, but I don't know if, if how deep the mastermind is going here and who's getting these Pokemon and how, et cetera. So sure, well, just thinking. Yeah, I mean. There could be a detonator. Well, I hope not. They could go full Matrix on us. Let's hope that that's not the case. I've never, I've never had any cause for concern health-wise for Rampardos or anything like that. You know, he's, he's always been okay. And never had any concerns. And he's certainly been at a Pokemon Center and in a healing machine a few times daily with uh, gym battles and things like that. So I think that if there was something wrong, we would have found it by now. Forgive me for... Mm, uh, yeah, I hear you. And yeah, sure. Last time I used a healing machine in a public space, all of my Pokeballs were broken and then tried to snag. Everything felt on the up and up then. That's a fair point. But little did I know. That little is... did I know. Little I know I am. But little did I not know I had. That made so much sense. <laughs> she says out loud. Yeah, absolutely. And she writes it down in her book. <laughs> this is the draft version. Seely, type that down. My little stenographer. Stenographer? Yeah. <laughs> Lucas says, yeah, look, I, I know... It may seem a little paranoid, but we've we've had a weird, gosh, week. I don't week, even know at this point. Week, man. I'm yeah. I'm still ten. Mortimer says, "Yeah, look, whatever's going on, I'm happy to help or cooperate or whatever, however I can. I don't really know uh, what I can do for you guys at this point. I, I'll keep an eye out. I haven't really heard of anything else going on with Team Nasty since my little mishap here in town. So I don't sure. know where they're at." Uh, activity wise but that's what I got well we appreciate it I mean I'm just glad you're not a bad guy yeah I'm glad to not be one yeah way to go well hey look I know I uh, gave you your gym reward stuff but you know I, I threw a little extra challenge at you and also well if you guys are dealing with the stuff it sounds like you're dealing with I think you might need a little bit of extra help so here uh, take these and he hands each of you two TRs well I don't need one I mean, he's he's offering you. All right. But as extra gym reward slash here's something to help you not die, he gives y'all TR-76 Stealth Rock and TR-10 Earthquake. It's his standard extra goodies from gym leader inventory. Cool, thanks. Yeah, just, you know, be careful out there. Hey, and next time you need help, call us. Yeah, man, we'd love to help you. I'll, I'll definitely, uh, well, now that I've... Got your number again. I'll, I'll give you a call if I need something or if I you hear something. You have Lucas too, right? Lucas like, what's his number? <laughs> Sends a text. Bing! Nice. Shows up on his Poke Gear. Yep, I've, I've got it now. Nice. Yeah, so uh, what are you guys doing from here? Are you just going around and seeing 
who seems to be shady and who doesn't as yeah, far totally. as the other gym leaders. We're going to scope them out. We're going to drill them like we've drilled you. Sure. And infiltrate. Hey, anybody could help us with that? Anyway, I can help you with that? Yeah, like an approved by Mortimer, all VIP access into your gym. Into other people's gyms? Yeah. That is not my uh, jurisdiction there. Whoever's got their own gym, that's that's their whole thing. And, uh, you know, that is that is their dojo, so to speak. So I don't mess around with that. I mean, I'll tell you, if you see Lawrence, you can tell him I say hey. But, I mean, outside of that, uh, yeah, the, uh, the other ones... Some of them keep to themselves. Some of them are a lot. It just kind of depends. What other badges do you guys have right now? I know I that you fl- have mine. I flash all my badges. Ding! All right. Nice, nice. Luca is the same. Okay, so... We're kind of like best friends. I, I got the vibe. Well, it looks like, well, you got my badge. You know, I'm not on Team Nasty, so that's good. That's great. You got the swing badge. Obviously, Leroy was no good. Has anybody, nobody's heard from him still, right? Not not that we know of, no. Yeah, he's escaped to another dimension. Another dimension? Yeah, a dimension of evil! Got it. And, oh, y'all have Lem's badge. (laughs) He's a funny guy. Uh, I like Lem. Lem's themed on the up and up. uh, I mean, honestly, I think Lem's just kind of happy to be there wherever he's at. Yeah. (laughs) So We're not uh, re-questioning Lem. I respect the guy. Keep it simple. Play your banjo. Do your thing. So there's... So you feel good about... I've never had any issue with Lamb, if that's what you're asking. Yeah, no, but there's no others that you really are like, ooh, maybe they are a bad guy. Go ahead and roll 2d6, just just plus one, since Mortimer has had other dealings with other gym leaders, and, you know, he's he's got some amount of instinct. He's a gym leader, so... Nine. Okay, a nine. A mixed success. Surely you guys have had a potluck or like a reunion or a company once a year meeting to go over your insurance benefits. Just roll 1d6. Two. You know, Ignatius always struck me as kind of odd. All right. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Which gym does he rent? He's got the badge over in Lepiota City. Lepiota, noted. Yeah, he uh, he gives out the techno badge. Oh uh, my goodness, I can't wait. So you know he's uh, I don't know, he's always been kind of very standoffish, and you know he's he's from another region, so it's one of those things where you're like, I don't know if you're being rude or if that's just you. Uh, culture. <laughs> I'm thinking about the one player on the team on Ted Lasso. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the, like, Swedish guy? Who just says, like, well, that kick was terrible. Yeah, yeah, he's just very blunt. <laughs> yeah, just that that level of bluntness where you're like, I don't know, is that just how you are or are you being... So he's like, yeah, no, I always I always got weird vibes and I never really knew where I stood with the guy. Good to know. I appreciate it. Yeah, but I'll tell you what, the bass is always thumping. <laughs> I'm not against it. Always thumping, but yeah. So I- Ignatius, he's over. He's over in Lepiota City. That's what I got. Do you guys need anything else? I think I'll probably need to get out there in a little bit. I got another challenger coming up. No, um, good luck out there, man, and sorry about your leg. I appreciate you, and you know it's all right. At least I got a cool chair out of the deal. Yeah, thanks, man. This was an awesome experience. I'm really glad I got to meet you and uh, experience the gym. It's so cool here. And uh, again. You know, don't be a stranger. If you need help, call us. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll let you know. And, well, y'all keep me updated if you find out about anybody else and you know, what may be going on with them. Me totally well. All right, well, y'all take care. Uh, be careful out there. Don't break your legs. Ugh, and he hoists himself up on oh, his crutches. I break a leg. That's what, you know, good luck. Ah, showbiz. Ooh, jazz hands. <gasps> Ooh, and you all... Leave the green room. Nice. And that is where we will end this episode.
Crocodile Rock. Melody. I remember when I was young. I remember when this Pokemon was. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm not there yet. It was going to be, I remember when Pokemon was fun. Me and Luca, we were just so young. Now remembering how it was. Before they broke all the bones in our bodies. And then I remember how we were young. <laughs> <laughs> That's how Luca feels right now, inside, just a little bit. Oh no, maybe gosh. Pearl. Pearl feels that. Pearl, fe- Pearl and Celie want to come up with a great baby grand, white baby grand piano and sing that. But we're going to be more supportive. Oh, my gosh. That's hilarious. And we were singing, go, Luca, smash the gym leader. And right. take him around the town. <laughs> it's not the swing or the other kind of gym. It's the rock and roll gym now. <laughs> it's bad. It's bad. It's going to go great with the nice, you know, hard guitar music going on under it. It's going to yeah. go just gel together really nicely. You can cut it. <laughs> oh, no. No, please save the listeners. That pain, that musical pain. Hello friends, Jonah here from Quest Company Jr. Popping in to say that the show that you've just been listening to is part of the Podicon Go Podcasting Network, a group of independent creators committed to creating, distributing, and supporting content that's family-friendly and fun for all ages. If you enjoy this show, be sure to subscribe on your preferred podcasting platform and show some love with a five-star rating and review. Every time you do, you are helping support the creation of more family-friendly content. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time. And Quest Company Junior. Postcards from Pearl is a fan-made podcast and is not affiliated with Nintendo, Game Freak, or the Pokemon Company.